The Tories are calling yesterday a day of chaos on Brexit at Labour Party conference. Are they right? Tories calling uh, Labour Party's position chaos is a bit rich, given that um, they are in utter chaos. I mean, last week we had the spectacle of the um, collapse, essentially, of the Salzburg uh, meeting with the Prime Minister and the EU at each other. And we're facing now the prospect that these negotiations aren't going to come in with a deal that will work for the UK and might even have no deal. So um, I would compare what happens today at Labour Party conference with what you're going to see next week uh, at Tory Party conference. Today, we're going to unite behind a motion that has very clear principles to it. If it's a bad deal or no deal, Labour will vote against it. We'll call for a general election. If there isn't a general election, uh, then options must be uh, available, and one of those is a public vote. Now, to get the whole of the Labour Party into one position behind that, I think, is a very big achievement, and I would contrast that with some of the interview, interviews you'll probably be doing next week at Tory party conference. Do you think the majority of the public understand that as your position? Do you think there's a danger that they could be confused by the message from Labour Party conference on Brexit? Well, I think today we're setting out a very clear message. It is our job, obviously, to keep on reiterating it, make sure it is clear. But I think people understand that something's going very wrong with the negotiations and that it looks like we're heading for a bad deal or no deal and to hear our party say that's not acceptable to hear our party say if you fail to that extent you really ought to go i think is very clear and then to say well if none of that happens other options have got to be available we'll protect ourselves from a catastrophic end and one of the options is a public vote that's a clear sort of practical almost structured approach that i think people will understand. I have to say we're only in this position having this discussion because of the failure of the talks. I mean, most people, whichever way they voted, would have thought that they'd have a government competent enough to actually reach an agreement, but we're not in that state. So, Kira, if there were to be a public vote, as you say, could you categorically rule out extending Article 50? Could you categorically tell us that the UK would leave the European Union on the 29th of March 2019? Well, the answer is it depends because we don't know when we're going to get a deal. The October deadline might slip to November. November might slip to December. I don't know. I'm not conducting the negotiations. So the timeline is not in our control. I don't think at this stage anybody is talking about extending Article 50. But if it has to be extended, quite frankly, it'll be because of the collapsing failure of the discussions and the negotiations. So the, the Labour, Labour policy could extend Article 50? Well, the, the, the idea was that the deal was to have been achieved by the October EU summit. Uh, that's 23 days away. If that is missed, there's only really one person to point the finger at, that's the Prime Minister. So I, I really don't think this will be turned around uh, as a Labour Party issue. If there's problems with timing, it's because of the failure of the negotiations.